transformational change, a total 180. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Back at it again with another one-on-one interview. I know y'all talked about and requested one of these, so I got another one for y'all. By the way, my name is Adam Scott, founder of A Total 180, helping you start and develop your online business in 90 days or less. Uh, today, I got a good one for you guys. I know that you guys have been talking about, you know, doing some interviews. And for me, you know, me and this gentleman, we we had talked about this for, for some time now. And I can tell you for a fact that um, you guys are in for a treat. Uh, if you are a part of this private Facebook mastermind group, go ahead and use the Start Here post to take advantage of some of the resources that we have for you. Uh, but without further ado, I want to introduce the guy known as Tim Billions, right? Um, this gentleman here is a former Navy veteran turned entrepreneur slash business owner. We're going to dive deep into how he made that transition, um, how he made a total 180. As you know, that's the name of my company, a total 180, how he made his a total 180 and how you can use some of the wisdom and insight that he shares to be able to make your personal a total 180. But without further ado, Let's bring it to uh, this interview, Mr. Tim Wright. What's going on, Tim, man? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm blessed, King. I'm super blessed, man. Can you hear me loud and clear? Hey, man, I can hear you loud and clear. By the way, for those of you that don't know uh, Tim, um, this guy right here is a wonderful man of faith, an entrepreneur that's making head waves. And uh, I know for a fact that uh, if you guys are tuning in or listening or maybe watching this on replay, the value that you're going to get is going to be explosive considering you are trying to make a personal total 180. But Tim, you know, kind of tell people a little bit about who you are, how you got the nickname Tim Billions, and um, and also kind of tell people about uh, where, you know, you are right now in your life, bro. Yeah, um, so I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. First of all, my man, I appreciate you for uh, having me and reaching out to me and, and even wanting to hear my insight and my input um you know for whatever reason i really definitely appreciate that um but i'm from dallas texas originally born and raised and i uh you know man i I wanted to do something different with my life and i was actually just talking to one of my brothers about this just recently and all of the decisions that i made up until this point have really been because I, i always seen myself as different you know i always felt like i was different from other people and when i when i declared that over myself um, anytime I felt like I was doing what everybody else was doing, I always wanted to switch up. I always wanted to change it up. And, you know, one of the biggest reasons why I joined the military, I mean, I used to work at Foot Locker, you know, um, just a very regular job. You know, I was assistant manager there making very regular money. I was actually a part-timer uh, there for a while. And I became like a, like a sales league, if you will. And, you know, I'll be honest, man. One thing I hated, I, I hated that anybody from my high school could just come up to my job and see that I was there. And to be honest, man, it made me it made me feel like and it was just me projecting my own self on other people. But it made me feel like people thought that I was in the same place. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I I hated it, you know, to be honest with you, I hated it. So, you know, I wanted to join the military. I I knew the military was something different. It was something that none of my friends were doing. Nobody in my proximity was doing. Like I said, I just was really big on being different. Uh, And then going into the military, you know, when I first joined the military, I thought it was something that I wanted to do for for 20 years you know i was sitting in the car i had a 1996 toyota camry i was sitting in the car with my brother justin igbuna and i was asking him, i was like man what if god doesn't want me to be super rich and successful man what if he just wants me to be regular you know let do something like go to military you know just live a you know a decent life and you know i never forget this quote man and it stuck with me you know i'm 29 years old now he told me this when i was 17 i was actually 18 and um he said man God wants you to do whatever you want to do. And he said that, he said that way before, way before he really knew what he was saying. Um, he was like, man, God wants you to be whatever you want to be, bro. And if you want to be rich and successful, God wants that for you. And man, I'm telling you, man, that I heard that so early in my life from another young kid that I knew was, he wasn't really all the way there when he said it, but he was so far ahead of his time when he said it to me. And that's something I just chose to believe in. I chose to believe that, you know, I chose that I chose to believe that God wants me to be as successful as I want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that led me to getting out of the military. The military was a great journey for me. It allowed me to grow myself. I think it was something that was super needed. You know, I met some great individuals there like yourself. Um, 
And, you know, I really felt like it gave me a lot of st stability, but more importantly, it gave me structure. Mm. You know, the, the way that I was carrying myself and, you know, even for being, and I know you can probably attest to this, being on the outside now that you're not in the military anymore, you can see that a lot of people that don't have any structure, they just wake mm. up and they just, they wake up whenever their eyes open, you know, they think that's the cool thing to do. Um, and they go to sleep whenever they want to, because they think that's the cool thing to do. You know, my one thing somebody told me, like, when you got the military, man, you're going to have so much freedom to do whatever you like. And the individual that said that to me today in today's time is not in the best place in the world financially or, you know, he, he has a job living very regular. And I know it's only because of his mentality. Mm -hmm. He assumed that when he was no longer in the military, that he would be free. Right. That's and he, was, he could do whatever he wanted to do. Right. <laughs> and um, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Right. That's the furthest thing from the truth. When you start entrepreneurship, you're less free. Mm. You have way less. You have way less freedom. You have way more rules that you have to put on yourself um, than anybody else. So you know, it's been a, it's been an incredible journey, man. But I'm grateful that the military, though, because it it, get, it allowed me to build that up on accident. Right. You know, I wake up early even when I'm not trying to. Mm -hmm. You know, I make up my bed uh, out of out of habit. I walk in my room sometimes, but like, damn, I made my bed. You know, because it's just it's just something second that you out of you know, second nature to me. Second but I, I I wasn't that way before I joined the military. Right. So um, you know, being in the military though, man, it really made me realize though, although there was some great things about it, it really made me realize though how I don't want to live. Mm. You know, I'll tell you just a very quick story, man. I was in the mess decks um you know in on deployment and one of the the individuals that i idolized at the time his name was master chief master chief ellis he was a abe um master chief or just an aba ab master chief at that point um and you know i really just admired him man he was so suave so suave man so cool had this super deep voice you know um and he was you know the top of the top and on the enlisted side so i just i just naturally gravitated to his energy and man we were on deployment one day and I was sitting in MS decks eating. We were in the middle of Dubai, it's probably 140 degrees out. You know, we probably like four or five months into deployment at this time. This was in 2015. And I seen, I, he wears a lot of cologne and he didn't do any work. So you can always smell him when he walked by. That was actually one of the reasons why I started to develop my cologne uh, habit. And um, I seen him walk by, I smelt him first. And I turned around and I seen him had his little strut, you know, his little, his little pimp walk, which is walking through the MS decks. And it dawned on me that he had been in the military for 30 years, but he was exactly where I was at, on deployment, hot as hell, mm. away from his family. Mm. Yeah, I'm, man, I'm telling you, this is a true story. I immediately got my stuff. It just hit me. I got my stuff. I threw my, threw my food away. I went up to, the, went up to my uh, shop. I had one of the, the airmen get off, their, get off the computer. I told him it was an emergency. And I got on there and I researched how much money a uh, master chief made at 30 years. And it was only like 8,300, 8,400. And I was just so disgusted with that. Mm. And ever since then, man, I made a decision that I was going to get out the military. That's and then incredible. I ended up getting out in 2020. Um, and then, you know, we've had, a, we've had some great strides since then, some great strides. That's incredible. You know, something that I want to touch on that you said earlier is is freedom you know most people don't realize this but freedom and that that term freedom and free it's a paradox right it's an oxymoron as much as we want to believe freedom is actually free it's actually expensive right and and for the people that are listening to this and watching this like we, we 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 fight for and we go to war for so-called freedom but sometimes we are victim and we, we we're prisoners of our own mind Right. Um, and that's and that's something that, you know, we're going to touch on a little bit later. So 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 to kind of back up, you joined the military because, you know, from what you said earlier, you know, you didn't want to be like everybody else in, in your community, be like everybody else where you were from, you know, born born and raised in Dallas, Texas. You know, you didn't want to grow up and, 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 and kind of fit the mold for the people that were doing what you were doing. So you joined the military. And what, what, what years was, was it that you joined? 2012. So 2012. So we were, if we were to look back at your first year, your first full year in the Navy, what was your initial impression of the Navy? Like you was like, man, this ain't so bad. Like what was that first year impression like? 
yeah, man, this is this is cake. This like, is cake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I could do yeah. this for four years. You know, my first, I, I was the. Uh, so what? What changed? What changed my life? Yeah. Not what changed my career. Mm-hmm. What changed my life is I was the recruit chief petty officer in boot camp. That changed my life. Before I joined the Navy, you know, I was just smoking weed, hanging out, chilling all the time, you know, watching TV, playing basketball. And I was a super introverted. You know, um, I used to go to this school called uh, Richland Community College. And you wouldn't believe this now, but uh, when I used to, let's say the teacher had a question. I remember my sociology class, the teacher asked a question one time and I raised my hand because I wanted to answer. But when I tell you, when, I, when my hand went up, my heart dropped to the floor because I was so nervous of him calling my name. That's how uncomfortable I was to speak in front of other people mm. at the time. When I joined the military, you know, my RDC told me this to be quiet, sit in the back and, you know, you'll be all right. I said, okay. So I did that. And um, one day, man, this is like the, the first, first week or second week of uh, P days, you know, we were in boot camp. Yeah. And um, my RDC, not my RDC, but my recruit chief petty officer, he couldn't swim. So, you know, one day the, the, and he was getting yelled at like every day and everybody noticed it. So one day the, the recruit, the, you know, the RDC was like, who wants to be, who wants his job? And when I say was crickets in there, bro, it's crickets. Nobody raised their hand and they said, nobody wants his damn job. And I was just like, I don't know what came over me. I don't. I was just, just like, yeah. let me go ahead and grab that joint real quick. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know yeah. what I was doing. I didn't know the position I was going to have. And, you know, he walked up to me and he said, you want this job? I said, yes, petty officer. He said, not sound like a little bitch you want. And he said, you sure you want this job? And I said, yes, petty officer. And then, you know, he had me go to the front, man. And, um, you know, I heard this great quote that says, God does not call on those who qualify, but he qualifies those who answer the call. Mm. And that moment right there, when my RDC told me not to take any jobs, mm. That moment right there, bro, has changed my entire life. It changed the way I communicate. I know a lot of people, like even like somebody yourself, you admire the way I communicate when I'm speaking in front of people. I never would have developed that if it wasn't for that moment. Mm. So, so you, so you, you got the job that you know you, you know, had to stand up and say, yeah, you know, let me go ahead and grab that real quick because you know, th- there's a there's something I, I was reading. It's called moments of indecision, right? In, in a moment. It can immediately change the trajectory of your life in hindsight. You can either stay and be, you know, and, and be comfortable or get out of your comfort zone and grow. Right. Um, uh, there was something I was also reading that, that says, you know, the definition of fear, right, is, you know, false evidence appearing real. And we both know that, you know, fear is only overcome by with faith, right? We, we, we both brothers in Christ, so we kind of can relate to understanding, like, you know, if I'm going to make this, if I'm going to make this jump, if I'm going to do this, then this is what I, this is why I got to do it. So, so being in the Navy, uh, I want, I want to kind of talk about that story you said about, you know, uh, your master chief seeing that what, what, what was it that bothered you so much about seeing a 30 year master chief in the same position as you, was it the fact that he had made so many sacrifices and then in, in, in your scope of imagination like dude i have a i want to have a family i want to have children but damn it i'd be damned if i'd be out somewhere in the middle of nowhere away from my wife away from my kids what what was it that kind of made you be like man this ain't it bro yeah it was all of that it was all of that like being away from my family you know uh being on deployment for most just like for most people was the first time they've ever really been away from their family that long you know for an extended period of time with no source of communication other than email you know it wasn't i could facetime my mom or pick up the phone and hear her beautiful voice or or none of that you know it was strictly i'm talking to the guys or or to the females that's on the ship and that's really it you know and i noticed that and i know that you know, they have the, you know, the phones where they can call out, but it's pretty much the same thing as well. So that was a, that was one of them. But the real thing though, was me seeing the pay scale. Mm. That was a real thing. Cause I, I, I'm okay with sacrifice. If the return on the investment makes sense, you know, um, I'm down heavily on in the crypto market right now. Heavily. heavily. Yeah. We, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk heavily. about that. Heavily. Yeah. yeah. But but I'm willing to do that because I genuinely believe that the return 
on on me being down or me sacrificing is is going to be 10 times worth it but you know me seeing that eight three hundred dollars a month as a somebody or you know yeah as a, as a highest person in the in the whole on the whole ship in that whole department it's like man nah nah that's not i didn't see that for myself mm. and I, I i was actually thinking about that because going back to what we said about fear I'm actually kind of found what I was looking for. It was a, a specific quote. I couldn't remember. But fear has two meanings. Forget everything and run or face everything and rise. Mm. And it's incredible to realize that you chose the latter. You, you chose to face everything and rise. So I want to applaud you and get you your flowers for that, because a lot of people are going to forget everything and, and run. They're going to run back to their comfort zone. They're going to run back to their family. They're going to run back to their community. They're going to run back to their childhood. They're going to run back to their hometown. But some people like you understand, like, do it. It's either I'm going all in or I'm going to lose everything. Right. So so in the military, you made the decision to not continue your career and to get your feet wet and to take the dive into entrepreneurship. What was your initial thoughts into becoming an entrepreneur, into becoming a business owner? Was it something that you had initially thought about after, you know, seeing what your master chief had, um, had, uh, had, had shown you as far as in being in the military for 30 years, or maybe you had like a family member or relative that was an entrepreneur that kind of inspired you or maybe rekindled that desire, but you didn't know you had it. Um, man, again, all the above. I had my, my, my best friend, my brother, my guy, like, you know, one of my life partners, his name is Justin Ekbuna. Um, and his dad was always very successful. You know, Justin, man, Justin drove to the school. He went to, uh, he went to, to our favorites dance. He was in his dad's brand new Denali at the time, you know, for prom, he drove, he drove his dad's range over to prom. So I've always kind of had somebody that was right there with me who was, who was, his parents were doing well. And it made me want to do that as well. But um, really, I live by this quote, to know who you are is to know who you're not. And when I looked at an individual who had, let's say if he joined the military at 20 years old, and then by the time he was a master chief, that was 30 years later, he was 50 years old. And he was making, let's just say at that point, he's making eight to 9,000 a month. Again, to know who you are is to know who you're not. I'm not someone that's 50 making $8,000 a month. Mm. So that me, that me making that decision to believe that about myself at that time when, you know, I was making, I wasn't making anywhere near $8,000 a month at that time. Um, it, it, it impacted all my, all my decisions, you know, to do what it is that I'm doing now and do what I have done in the past. Mm. And that's just to be, you know, um, an entrepreneur. You know, I joined this company called World Financial Group in twenty in twenty seventeen. Um, when I was on deployment, I read two. I read three books. I read a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I know everybody is very familiar with. Right. Um, I read a book called No Excuses by Brian Tracy, and then I um, I read a book called The Alchemist by Robert Greene, and those three books just gave me an enlightenment. And, um, you know, it gave me such an awareness that I felt like the majority of the individuals, the sailors didn't have. And I could be wrong about that, but that's just how I personally felt at the time. And, you know, at that moment, man, it just everything else attracted itself to me. You know, Tony came to me and introduced me to World Financial Group. You know, me learning about IM Academy, that was brought to me. You know, me learning about, you know, investing in crypto. That was somebody that brought it to me. And I just chose to listen, get into the trucking industry, having a truck, buying trucks dispatching trucks that's something that was brought to me through my energy opposed to me. it's something that i didn't go look for it it's something that was brought to me you know mm -hmm. so um i believe that that happened just based on the decision that i made i was sitting outside of my um outside of my car outside of the the command this was april 1st 2020 um i was sitting there you know i was praying you know i had nine days left in the navy at that time and I made a decision to myself that I would never, ever, ever be a W-2 earner, ever. Mm. I would never go clock in for anybody, ever, as long as I live. I will partner. So I could be a W-2. You know, NBA, NBA players are W-2, but I would never. It's a partnership. 
I would never clock in and show up somewhere and let somebody tell me when I can and can and leave for lunch. Never. Mm. That's dude. That's huge, man. That's paramount. Cause a lot of people that that's going to go over a lot of people's head, you know, um, and, and, and making that decision, you know, nine days left. You're like, you know, that, like I said before, man, Tim, it's, it's just a lot of different avenues that a lot of people can make. And there are certain times when we, we, we get that, that, that feeling of, I got to do this, not just, but it's not just for me though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just so I can, you know, feed my ego so I can feed my prize. It's like, bro, nobody in my family done ever did this. Right. Nobody in my, in my, in my family tree done ever make this jump into, you know, never turning back to that W2 life. So again, I applaud you for that. So, you know, getting started with the company that you named, you know, WFG, World Financial, what would you attribute to your, your growth, your first couple of years, you know, in that company or in entrepreneurship? Was it, you know, what, what, what were you listening to at the time? What, what, what were you reading? Who were you looking up to? Who were you following on social media? Because I know there's a lot of people that may be listening or watching this and like, Dude, I'm I'm my first year into the entrepreneurship journey, but at that first year mark, when you're you know getting your feet wet, what books were you reading? What podcasts were you looking listening to? Who were you following on social media that kind of catapulted your entrepreneurship journey? Yeah, so um, before I even joined WFG, I actually I actually was doing a little bit of wholesaling. Um, did a couple of wholesale deals, you know, pretty, you know, some, some I got lucky on some was just, I kind of was starting to get good at, but I was listening to this podcast called bigger pockets, bigger pockets was the, actually the first podcast that I had ever listened to. And, you know, a lot of the individuals that they were interviewing had always talked about listening to podcasts instead of listening to music. So I know that success leaves clues. Now we hear that all the time that success leaves clues. But, you know, I, 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 when I heard it, I knew that, OK, success leaves clues like a person that's successful. You don't necessarily have to do what it is they do, but you want to just think how they think in a way, in a manner that they're thinking. Like for me to tell you, you know, I, I was 24 years old when I got the military, not 24, I'm like, well, hold on, I'm 29 now. I was 27 when I got the Navy. When I got the Navy, I think I had like $9,500 in my bank account at the time when I got the Navy. But I was so confident. I was so confident in, in, in what was to come. And like you said, I knew my faith was so strong in what I knew was about to happen in my life. I wasn't very fearful about what wasn't going to happen. Um, and that was based on my preparation. You know, I started preparing for, to, for me to get out the Navy, you know, when I had my daughter, Zara, you know, and that was in 2016. And um, when I started, when I had her, I really was like, okay, I know that I'm not going to get out the military. That was, she was the only reason why I re-enlisted for another four years in the military. Um, and yeah, man, I just made that decision again that I was going to get out. But I, you know, if you hear that, I want you to really consider the type of decisions that you've made in your personal life. If you're listening right now, because those things are going to really, really genuinely be the defining moment. My mom didn't give me advice on the decision I need to make because I didn't need it. My mom was living her own life. I didn't need to call my dad and ask him what he thought about my life. Because it's my life. I didn't need to call you. Hey, Adam, what you think, man? You think I should never work for a job ever again? Because, you know, to be honest, you could be the best person for the advice, but I just genuinely didn't care what you thought. And that's super, super important when you really want to go far. The decision got to be made for you, because of you, and only for you. And when you turn yourself up, man, you'll turn everybody else up around you. Man, man, we, 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 we about to die deep. But, I mean, if you guys are listening to this, I mean, I'm sure... You got a book full of notes from the both of us, um, but let, let's keep tracking along. So you made the decision to get out. You had about $9,500 left. At that time, you were making a move to never, ever go back to a W-2. But if, if, if we could back up just a tad bit, just as much, I know that maybe you were involved into crypto before you got out. Or maybe that was after. But for those people that are, you know, curious about what it's, what it's like to be a part of the crypto market, what dawned on you and made you make that decision to be like, yo, this might be the come up for real. Like, and I, I kind of say again, Dogecoin, Dogecoin. Okay. Kind of tell us a little bit about, 
you know, how you got involved into crypto with Dogecoin, man? How, how were you exposed to crypto, actually? Um, just a friend. Again, a friend reached out to me. Hey, man, my boy, he, you know, you know about this crypto stuff? Like, y'all heard about it. He said, man, you need to kind of look into this, man. You need to put some money into it. So I was like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm super... I'm always been an opportunist, you know, I'm willing to try anything because, you know, I, I see where I want to go. So I can't, I think most people, they want to be successful, but they have literally set so many boundaries around themselves as far as what they won't do. And they may not, they may not, just like with me being the, the recruit you petty officer in the Navy, they may not realize that behind the things that you think you want to do is actually everything that you ever wanted. But the, the fact that we're so blocked off to our comfort zone, it, it actually prevents us from really being successful. So I was open-minded, you know, I put, I put like almost a thousand dollars in there and we got in at less than one cent. Um, and with us getting in at less than one cent, Dogecoin went up to like 70 cents. You know, so you let's just say if I got in at one cent and if I had a thousand dollars in there at one cent, every one cent, the money doubles. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so you just, you got to do the math. And that, that made me like, oh, wow. Oh, this could be something big, you know? And even after, even after we benefited from, from, from that, I still wasn't a hundred percent like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But it did open my eyes. It did open my eyes. I started to look at a lot of the cryptocurrencies and I was looking at something like Solana, for example, Solana at the beginning of 2020, excuse me, at the beginning of 2021 was like four or $5. And it, the year when it ended, it was like $250. So mm -hmm. you consider somebody putting a thousand, 2000 again at that time, you know, the same thing with Bitcoin, same thing with polka dot, same thing with all these different currencies. And when I started to go back, you know, in order for you to be a leader of the future, you got to study the leaders of the past. In order for you to catch the waves of the future, you got to go back and study the waves of the past. Mm -hmm. Right now, if anybody is knowing anything about crypto market, today is May 12th, 2000. In 22, if you know anything about crypto and you've done any, well, no need, just no need, just go back and do your research. 2019, 2020, 2021, when there was a huge pullback. You know, I just seen on the news today that crypto is down 200 billion dollars in 24 hours. Behind every great depression is billionaires created. Behind every every market crash. There's new billionaires created. So every time, every time there's an obstacle, there's opportunity. And um, people have to start looking past what their eyes can see and look for the truth. Because, you know, believe it or not, your eyes are causing you to believe in lies. What we see right in front of us is actually not true. You actually got to go do research to find out the truth. And that's why a lot of people don't know about it, because it requires real effort to know about the truth. You know, even with knowing about our ancestors, you can only, you can believe what's right in front of you. And you think that black people hate black people because we kill each other. We call each other anywhere all the time. This at the third. But if you look further than what your eyes can see and do your real research, you will know the truth. Same thing with the crypto market, man. You know, you go do your research on it and you'll see that it's the future. Businesses are already looking to implement it into their companies not and not just for um like a financial gain i buy it at the low and sell it on the high no they're looking on how to implement these securities how to implement these new currencies even or how to implement the way that the cryptos were created and what it's designed to do they want to take that and implement that in businesses and they're going to be hiring thousands of people to do it um, so it's just it's just something to me that's fun. I studied millionaires. I studied billionaires. I studied Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, and they always are talking about 2030, 2040. You go back and look at Elon Musk 10 years ago, he was talking about 2020. So for me, I'm like, okay, success leaves clues. I want to be big dog level like that. So I'm doing what they do. I'm studying the trends. And I'm learning and investing in things that are going to benefit me 10 years from now. So I'm thinking about the, the, the Tim, I'm thinking about the 35 year old Tim, the 40 year old Tim instead of the 29 year old Tim. That's the real reason why I invest in crypto. That's incredible. You know, that, that <clears throat> it makes me think of a quote that says vision is the mother of direction. 
Um, and you know, the Bible talks about how, you know, when, when, it, when there is no vision, what the people perish. Right. Um, and you know, that, that, that goes deeper to understanding that, you know, whatsoever man thinketh, so is he. So, you know, if you don't think of yourself as a, as a, as a entrepreneur, as a business owner, as an investor, as a marketer, as a creator, as an inventor, you're not that because you don't think that, you know, um, and, and, you know, there, there's something called the TFAR method, which is thoughts lead to feelings, feelings lead to actions, actions lead to results, right? But it all starts with what? Thoughts, right? Um, and, and nobody that's listening to this would be able to be where they are had they not thought themselves there. You know, I think Steve Harvey kind of related to this maybe a couple of years ago. He said, the very place you are right now is because you thought yourself here. So if you don't like where you are, you need to think yourself out of it. And um, man, you, you're hitting on so many gems because for those people that are listening to this, they're like, man, the crypto market done, done, really done, shot me. But, and I was just talking to a friend uh, this afternoon about the crypto market and me and him were kind of relating. He was like, dude, I see opportunity to buy. It's crazy that you talk about that. Like while people are, you know, skeptic, and they're looking like, man, I lost this. There's people like, dude, this is the perfect opportunity to buy, right? And, and, and what's to come? You know, we don't know what's what's going to happen with the housing market. But like you said, like success does lead clues. You know, the bust of two thousand, uh, the bust of two thousand, which is the dot com bubble. You know, uh, the stock market crash of two thousand eight. You know, crypt, uh, uh, the, uh, the the whole crypto market in the um, 2019, 2020 uh, pandemic every single time you've seen people come out of that, like you said, become millionaires, multimillionaires and billionaires. Right. So you talked about earlier getting involved into the trucking business. Right. Um, just just kind of talk to people about why, you know, you were able to continue to make these endeavors that, you know, God is placing you in and flourishing them kind of talk to people about that and, and what you're doing now um, in, in the trucking business to kind of create and continue to create momentum. Yeah, man. Um, my, I was just talking to my brother about this again, just a couple of nights ago. And, you know, I was telling him, you know, this is locker room talk me and him was having. So I don't want you to think, you know, I'm like super arrogant, but I am very confident. I was telling him, I said, bro, I'm good at anything. I just do. I just am good at anything at this point. Anything I do is gonna is gonna be a success. It just it doesn't matter what it is because I'm I'm older now. I'm not a kid anymore. I've I've developed certain skills and I'm still developing certain skills and I'm and I'm more aware of my strengths than than anything. Which is why when I come into an opportunity, um, I can capitalize. You know, almost right away because you know I'm only focusing on my strengths. I'm only focusing on what I'm good at, what I know for sure that I can do. Um, I can implement that. And that's communication. Me being able to communicate, me being able to talk to people, um, persuade and convince people that I'm the guy to do business with. You know, that's my thing. That's my thing. And that's why I've been able to be super successful. I wouldn't say super successful, but that's why I've been able to have some success so early on in the in the dispatching industry, in the trucking industry. You know, me and my brother, we're working on trying to get a couple of just like in real estate where you can buy uh, you can buy one house and get one loan or you can get three doors. You can get one loan. You do the same thing in the trucking industry. Instead of buying one truck, getting one loan, you get two trucks under one loan. You get three trucks under one loan. And, you know, we're really learning about that right now. But even in the midst of that, with us dispatching trucks, you know, people have already asked me, man, how are you acquiring so many trucks? You know, we're up to like 16 right now. We just got a, got a new one today out in 40, Texas. And, um, you know, I, I would just have to say it's just God, man. But it's not it's not because God has just continued to bless over me. It's just because I'm believing more that I am him. And if you believe that if you believe more that you were a God, not the God, but a God, because I am a resemblance of him. I am a piece of him and he is a piece of me. So I feel like as I'm developing the energy more of like I am a God is I am most people don't believe that they are a God. They believe that they're like everybody else. And everybody is a God, by the way. They, most people don't believe that they are. And they think that they're supposed to sacrifice their, themselves and live a very basic life. And that's because they choose to believe that, though. And whatever you choose to believe is true. 
And uh, with me choosing to believe that I'm the one, I say these things all the time. You know, I'm a multimillionaire. I'm ultra successful. You know, I'm a business mogul. I'm a super closer. You know, people love being around me. These are things that I speak on myself every day. Um, I act in that way. And when I'm talking on the phone with people, they can just feel my energy, feel my aura. You know, people, I could just, I'm brand new into the industry and people like, man, I could just tell you, you just seem that you're, you know, I could just tell your aura, man, I'm excited to work with you. Okay. You know, it's just that. It's just yeah. that. So it's a lot of God, you know, God has been blessing me. And then, um, you know, I'm just believing that I'm deserving of it. Mm, that's that's another thing that, you know, we as believers and people that believe in God is, you know, <clears throat> God would not give you more than you can handle. Um, and I think we ask God for more. But in order for us to attain more, we must become more. Um, there was, you know, there's this guy. Um, I can't remember his name right now. Um, big guy on uh, on social media, uh, Jeff Logan. One of the things he said about three years ago, I'm not sure if you know Jeff Logan. Um, he yeah, said, yeah, um, yeah, he said, uh, he said, before you are, you must become. You know, before you are a multimillion, you got to become it in your mind. Before you are out of the military, you have to become that in your mind. Before you are a generational wealth creator, you got to become that in your mind. And another thing that I want to touch on that, you know, you kind of talked about is your mentality. How every single time, no matter what reality you're in, your mentality never changes, right? It's it's always just an even kill mentality where where it doesn't matter what you do, like you like you spoke on. It's just like whatever I touch, I'm gonna prosper, right? Because I know who, I know who's the prosperer, right? right. Um, and I, I want to ask you a couple of things before we wrap up. For somebody making a decision to con or, or contemplating the decision to leave the military or maybe they're contemplating you know making that jump and 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 really you know doing something different with their career maybe doing yeah. something different with their life making yeah. that total 180 that we talked about in the beginning yeah. what would you tell that specific man or woman on the yeah. fence ready to make that decision to get out wanting to make more for themselves but they just aren't sure about how they can go about doing that okay okay so look if you want to do it if you want to get out the military first of all you got to stop asking people who are, who want to stay in should you get out that's the, that's the number one thing that you should never do people who you know want to stay in don't want to ask them what you think they should you should do when you get out you should stop you should stop asking everybody what you should do you should start talking more with yourself i recommend you meditate every day take 10 minutes to 20 minutes a day and listen to yourself only Turn the music off, turn your phone off, go sit somewhere, peace and quiet, no kids, no wife, nobody to influence what you're thinking. And you will realize, to be honest, how much you don't think. You realize that. And then once you start to gain some clarity on the fact that you don't think, you'll start to think. And then you will gain a lot of the ideas that you want to put forth. Then you should create an LLC. Um, any type of LLC. Um, Make a consulting LLC, make a marketing LLC. Don't make a don't make an LLC that has real estate in the um, in the business codes, because then you may not you may not get funding for a while because people know it takes a little bit of time. So don't do that. Just open up marketing, open up a consulting LLC. Once you do that, get you a Duns, go to dunsandbradstreet.com, get you a Duns number, go to listyourself.com, listyourself.net, put your business on list yourself so it can be legit. Now, after you do that, you want to make sure that you are also working on your credit if it's not if it's not good already. If it's good already, make it better. Um, if it's not good, <clears throat> get with the credit guy and get that stuff pulled off your credit. If you know anybody like your mom, your dad, your uncle, and they have good credit, have them add you as an authorized user on their credit. Um, you're going to need the address, the address that they use for their credit card. Like this is like for real, you should, you should really do this. The address that they use for their credit card, you're going to need it. You're going to need the card Transamerica, not, not Transamerica, TransUnion, um, Equifax and Experian and update your address. Add that address onto your typical address you have right now. That way, when the, on the report date, whoever puts you as an authorized user, when it, when it tries to show up on your credit, you will have an address to match it. If you don't have an address to match it, it's not going to report. If you got an address to match it, it'll report. And then boom, if you have your mom, she has an 800 credit score. She has a $20,000 credit card. 
that's going to affect your credit and boom, now you're out of here. Before you got the military, you should try to get some type of business loan with your EIN number. Okay. And, and uh, your EIN number, you can use your personal, um, your personal credit as a guarantor, like a cosigner, if you will. Like if you ever had bad credit, like myself, you know, you grew up like that. You have, you have somebody cosign a car for you, cosign an apartment. You are now going to become the cosigner for your business. Your, your name is going to be a guarantor for your business credit for you for you to get 50k 100k 25k whatever it may be you know then you're going to have get you an american express business card you can do all this while you're in the navy and last but not least if you haven't done so already buy you a house or try to buy you some type of property while you're in the military because you're guaranteed to be approved if you have good credit now you're going to lose some of those uh, benefits as far as getting that instant approval when you become a when you become an entrepreneur because now you become a lot more at risk so you can actually put yourself 10, 10 steps ahead of the game if you if you start to prepare. Um, preparation brings provision. The only people who prepare is people who have vision. You hear me? And then when you prepare, God is going to give you provision. When he knows that you want it because you've been preparing for that vision that you got, then he's going to bring you provision. You know, it's not beginner vision like we got. Yeah. Provision. Yeah. And that's what's, what's going to take your life to the next level. Um, doing those things before you get out the military is vital. <clears throat> Number one, you should have some type of uh, you, you're going to have credit history. You're going to have business credit history. You're going to already have a house that you're going to be living in that you could possibly turn right back around and sell. They tell you, you got to live in your house for a year for the VA. That is not true. Do not believe them people. I know a guy who uses VA loan. Sold his house in 30 days, made 125000 Don't listen to those people. They don't know what they're talking about. They love being regular. You don't want to be that. Don't think that. There's no rules. There's no rules. The moment that you separate yourself, your identity from being a petty officer or a chief or an officer, and you, you are subject to these guidelines and what everybody else has told you, you know, the, the mustache, you can't, you get, you know, the way you have your hair, so many, you're subject to think that every decision you make is a rule. When you let go of that, you will see there's so much opportunity out here for you to do literally anything that you think about. The fact that you're even thinking about it lets you know that it's out here for you. The fact that you're even considering it, even if it's never been done before, the fact that you're even thinking about it lets you know that you have the power to do it. Don't listen to people who don't want what you want and definitely don't take advice from them. Um, and if you do take advice from them, really listen to them because they're going to give you the advice that you don't need and you need to be able to catch that. So people who in the future, when they give you the same type of advice, you can see it. Mm, wow. That, I don't know about you, but uh, I was over here, you know, trying to get as many notes as I could. Cause I'm like, God damn. I mean, for, for, for real, for real, I appreciate you, you know, sharing that insight because uh, man, a lot of people, like you said earlier, um, they're listening to every, every single person. And those people don't have what they want. You know, there was a guy, I'm, 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 I think I'm, I'm not going to say Grant Cardone, but I want to say it's Grant Cardone. He said, don't take any advice from people who are not where you desire to be. Why are you taking financial advice from a person that's broke? Why are you taking business advice from an, from an employee? Right. Like, where, where's the congruency? Right. So there's now, something. Now, I, now I was one. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was once an employee. And so I would agree and disagree. I would say don't listen to people that have no desire to go where you want to go. Okay. You don't want to listen. You can sometimes take advice from somebody like Adam, who may not be a multimillionaire yet, but his his desires are there. You know, he may not have a business that's worth $100 million yet, but his desires are there. Therefore, he's gonna, he's not gonna tell you to stay at your job when that's not something that he would do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So so you could take an advice. I take advice almost from anybody except for people who don't want what I want. You don't want what I want. Like, uh, you know, the biggest advice for people who don't want what you want is they'll tell you that, man, just make sure that you're taking breaks and you're relaxing. You know, you need your rest. They always tell you that. Mm. Ask them, how do you know? The next time somebody asks you that, just, you know, and even you, mom, you do need your rest. If somebody told you, and if you genuinely believe that, and like, oh, I got to take breaks. And then, you know, I got to keep my mind together. Genuinely ask yourself, how do you know that? Mm. How do you know that to be true? 
Who has told you that that has made more than a $200,000, $300,000 that you should take breaks and, and rest a lot? You know, you have the capacity to do a lot. Think about how big Jeff Bezos is and Elon Musk and, you know, guys like uh, ladies like Oprah Winfrey, people like Ellen, you know, somebody, the rappers like the baby, little baby. Have, has anybody ever considered what they do all day? If they have the capacity to, to live their life on a schedule and fly here and fly there and then be here, you know, you see some of the rappers, they're in Orlando at, t at, at seven and then they're in L.A. by 1130. If they have the capacity to live like that, so do you. Mm. Mm. You know, there was something I was just listening to. Um, the reason why uh, we can never uh, fulfill our promises is because we don't believe in our potential. I was just listening, like last night, bro. It's crazy that we're talking about this. I was just listening to a guy. That's like, we're not afraid of, we're not afraid of failure. We're afraid of our success. It's scary to be the first in your family to maybe get a degree, join the military and get out of the military without ever having to worry about doing 20 plus years to become a business owner that is in Forbes, right? Is in entrepreneur, is an Inc. 500 company. That's a big deal. And that's what, that's what kind of scares us is like, Man, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for that because, you know, it's crazy how whenever we ask God for something, right, whenever, whenever we, we pray to God for something, the reason why sometimes those prayers to go on the answer is because we are not ready to receive them or the magnitude that they come with. And it's something that I've had to learn since being out of the military. It's like, yo, this is what you asked for, right? You know what I'm saying? You know, I asked God for that. Like, hey, I'm, 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 hey, God, go ahead and let me get out. All right, I'm going to give you that. Let me see what you're going to do with it. Man, it hit me like a week out. I'm like, damn, I'm really at the middle. Like, it, it, it hit for me May 1st, May 1st, 2020. I'm thinking like, okay, you know, I, I got out the Navy. My last day in the Navy was April, April, April the 10th, right? Uh -huh. so I got that April, I got that 15th check. You yeah. know, happy about that. I'm not in the Navy no more. You know, I'm yeah. chilling now. <laughs> May 1st, I'm like, see, like, they're going to, because I've heard so many people, they in the Navy paying me like three months after I got out. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, it's going to be me too. April 1st came. No check. I'm like, yo. Now, I wasn't worried. I wasn't broke. I wasn't tripping. Well, right. you know, I was not broke. But I was just like, nah, this is really real. I'm really out. Like, ain't no going back. Ain't no going back. But I, I wanted to touch on something that you just said, man, about, you know, most people there, you know, they, they understand their potential, but they're a little afraid of, you know, the success. And I, I'll, I'll tell you this analogy, you know, there, there are two types of shoppers. One shopper goes to the mall and they they go to the mall, they see what they're like, they buy it, and then they in and out. And then there's the typical shopper who's in a hurry to shop, like most people are, looking for something for the night, whatever it may be. But they spend hours at the mall, going in store after store after store after store after store. Not because they haven't seen what they like, but because they have to find what they like in their price range. Mm -hmm. The first shopper saw what he or she liked wanted it and bought it and i say all that to say there are two types of people in life one person they see what they want and they don't question the price mm. they decide that they want it and that's it i want a lamb truck well how much does it cost it doesn't matter that's what i want but see one person they always question the price they want to do what you do. Well, Adam, and I'm looking to get into the, 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 the to what you're doing, man, to speaking and doing all these things. So if, if I wanted to, here it is right here. If I wanted to do what you do, how many hours would I need to dedicate a day? How much time would I need to spend if I wanted to do something like this? And the moment, the moment that someone asked me that, I already know that they don't have, they, they don't, it's not that they don't have what it takes because we all got what it takes. We all are gods. Right. 
but they don't believe that they have what it takes. So they question, they question the price. They question the commitment. Is it going to be worth it at the end of the tunnel? And that's what most people do. That we all, you know, I have it written down right here on my right here on this whiteboard, 100 million minimum. And for the longest time, I questioned how much effort am I going to have to put in to acquire that? How much responsibility am I going to have on my shoulders to acquire that? And I know that any man or any woman that runs from responsibility runs from money, runs from opportunity, runs from success. So, you know, I would challenge everybody, you know, whatever it is that you desire to do, if you do do this, and more times than not, you've done it because we've all have done it, and that's okay. But ask yourself, like, do you, do you, are you really committed to the outcome, or are you still questioning what it's going to take to get to the outcome? As long as you're doing that, you know, it's like you want the, you want the. If you're a lady, you know, you want the Birkin bag. When you get on, when you get online and see it cost twenty thousand, uh, you know, that bag ain't even that cute. You know, we always do that, belittle the things after you know they. Those shoes cost twelve hundred. Man, they ain't even all that for twelve hundred. Mm-hmm. But what if they were two hundred? Then would they be all that? But the fact that you're questioning the price to determine the value, you are already selling yourself short. Hmm. I want to ask you about a conversation that we had. <clears throat> excuse me. In private, you gave me some advice. I asked you. I said, "I just turned twenty five. What would you tell me?" Um, to make the last five years of my 20s um, the best five years of my 20s. And you said, get money, buy income. You know, every time we talk about that, I kind of go back to that. So for somebody that's like, like, whoa, whoa, what the hell? Get money, buy income. Like, what y'all own over there? Mm-hmm. What would you tell somebody who wants to achieve that after doing some of the things that you talked about in business? What would you tell somebody that's making money and they're doing well in entrepreneurship. Maybe they have, uh, uh, you know, favor in their business. What would you tell somebody that 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 uh is trying to get money to buy income? And how could you break that down? I would say make sure first that you know you you're you're on your run. If not, if you haven't already done it, make that first six figures first. Push for that. Push for that. You know, set that as a target for you to make eighty three hundred dollars a month every month for a year straight, or you know, have some good month. You're making 20, 30,000. Um, you want to show yourself that you know how to make money because once you do that, you're going to develop a confidence. Like if you have a business and you've made a hundred dollars before, I want you to think about how the business started. More times than not, it just started from an idea in your head. If you understand that, you know that you have the power to change the world because mm-hmm. an idea in your head made you a hundred dollars. Now you got to do is up your thinking, up your thinking and go for that big number. So most people, they're focused on saving money. You know, they want to save a hundred thousand. That was my first target. I, I remember October, 2022, I mean, excuse me, October, 2020, I saved, I had a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account for the very first time. And, you know, that was a goal of mine. I wanted to be a, a bank of America platinum honors member. In order for you to do that, you have to have more than six figures in your account liquid for three months consistently right um and i was like dead serious focused on that and then i got there got a little past it got then i got way past and i started to retrace and when i started to retrace my first time i went below a hundred thousand my bank account and i realized that money doesn't save you only your hustle does Mm. I've seen people make a hundred thousand and then they quit their jobs. They have a, they have 50, 60, 70 K saved. And then they live off what they have saved instead of what they're making. Mm. And that's the, that, when I realized that in other people, I was like, yo, I'm not trying to live off what I have. I need to live off what I have coming in. So if I want to live bigger I need to have bigger coming in. It's not having bigger put up. I want to have bigger coming in. So I started taking the bigger that I had and putting it in places that can yield me monthly. That's what it's about. You know, my bills are, your bills are revolving 30 day. 
all of our bills, revolving 30 day bills. So, you know, I started to question, OK, how often, how how much more, how much room can I create? Between. I want you guys to hear this surviving and thriving. How much room could I create between making 5,000 a month? My bills are 4,300. That's survival. Most people, they like, man, okay, man, my bills are paid. You know, I got some groceries in the house. You know, I'm cool. And they'll go in the house, watch the basketball games, and they'll, they'll become comfortable with getting by. And they do just enough to get by. What, after they, If they do what they need to do at the beginning of the month to get by for the whole month, they'll chill the entire month. But, you know, I heard uh, Rich Stolle, you know, he was one of the co-founders of World Financial Group. He said one time he said that he was living, you know, his his lifestyle was about two, three million dollars a year. And he said that he had 100 years of income saved. Mm. And, you know, you probably can't see it right now, but that gave me the chills. I heard that like five years ago. And it still give me the chills today. And that was something that I, it just stuck with me. You know, some things just, st- just stick with you. Um, and that was one of that's them. That's crazy. That's a, that's a gem, bro. That's going to go over somebody's head, bro. Yeah. Cause they think they, they hear that number and they think it's unfathomable and I get it. I, I, I get it. But you know, um, mm. man, God is great. And we always say that, but people really act like he good. Man, um, you, you, you reminded me of something about hustle. Uh, I actually have the saved in my notes. And it's a daily reminder that I can never slack off. It says you can't fake the grind. Your lack of results will snitch on you. So true. Straight up, like reminder, daily reminder, like, hey, listen, yeah, you can be comfortable if you want. And you're going to go right back to where you came from. Um, Because comfortability doesn't yield uh, the life that you want. I was listening to Grant Cardone. It was like one one o'clock in the morning. Grant Cardone was saying something along the lines of understanding that you have to do what you hate long enough to be able to do what you love. I don't think nobody likes sending out cold emails, cold DMs, cold calls, calling prospects, bothering friends and family. But that 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 love to be able to travel see the world give your family the life of their dreams put your mother in the house and never have to worry about a house note ever again go to a car dealership ask for a custom car the way you want it and be able to have it dropped off to your house paid in full with your name on it yeah you got to do what you hate in order to do what you love in order to have that what you love so as we wrap up there's two questions I want to ask you. These these questions on a, on a deep end. I'm a, I'm a, I'm bring you out to the deep end because you know we in the navy we swim. But let me let me take you out to the deep end over here. You know what I'm saying? So five years from now, what do you want to be said about Tim Wright? So if we were to fast forward to May 12th, 2027. What do you want to have had accomplished and what do you want to be said about Tim Wright? Um, I mean, I just really want to make a difference in the world. Next five years, I want to grow our business to be evaluated at 350 million. Um, I want our business to have a revenue of about 50 million dollars a year. It's about four million dollars or so a month um, gross. Um, I want to have a eight figure payroll. That's my goal. Have a actually not in the next five years. That's a ten year goal. In the next five years, I want to have a multiple seven figure payroll. Um, I want to be paying out more than a million dollars a month to my employees, and to my dispatchers, and to my to my contractors. Um, and man, I, I want to have at least ten to fifteen people that have became millionaires because of my because of my uh, existence on Earth. You know, I I can't create a millionaire, but you know, I could give off the energy to help someone become that as well. Um, man, I wanna really uh, I wanna really give, start to go deeper into the future. And that involves me, you know, starting to talk to the kids. 
Um, I'm actually working on a book right now. My, I want to sell 10 million copies over the next five years. And with that, you know, I want I want this book. I won't specify exactly what it, what type of book it is yet, but I want it to be in every single school district in the United States. Wow. Hey, hey man, hey, ain't nothing like a dream that um has an expiration date. Like, you know, that's what makes it real. That, that's what makes it concrete. You know, you have a dream, you have a goal. You know, I, I think uh one of our guys, uh, that we look up to, I, I can't think of his name right now. He says a goal without a deadline is just a wish. And over here, we don't do wishful thinking. Uh, but it makes it more real when you have a specific day and it's in the calendar and it, it becomes concrete. It's the same way that we put a day in the calendar for our EAOS. I knew April 28th, 2022, that was the last day I was going to be called IT2 Scott, right? I knew April 29th. 2022 i'm gonna be adam right um and so this is the last question i, I want to ask you before i you know have you share your social media with everybody so they can follow you and, 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 and be connected with you and stay connected with you um the word legacy what do you want your legacy to be I want our family to be, I was actually just researching this last night. I want the right family to be one of the top 50 richest families in the world. Um, on Forbes, you know, um, I was looking at this, this, uh, this brand, M-E-A-D. Most people know about it. It's the brand that most people buy, the Spiral Notebooks. This brand. Yeah. All right? Yeah. This brand. Most of us have used this book for the majority of our lives. This family right here is one of the top 50 richest families in the world. And, um, you know, before it's all said and done, that's something that I desire to do as well. For our family to write legacy to be one of the top 50 wealthiest families in the world. Um, and then that's going to that's going to require me, though, to not only be that individual, you know, be that billionaire on myself, but also be able to duplicate my energy, um, not just into my friends. And, you know, my acquaintances and people who may follow me on social media, but more importantly, implement that energy into my family, you know, into my little brothers, into my little sisters, you know, into my mom, into my dad. You know, I'm really pushing Harvey. I talk to my mom every day and I tell her, hey, mom, you know, after this year, you don't have to work anymore. And when, when you don't work, that that is I'm not I don't want to pay you every month, put you on my payroll so you can just travel and live life, quote unquote, live life. That's not living life. I said, Mom, I want you to live your, your this last half of your life. I want it to be purposeful. The first half was based on me. And, you know, I know you changed a lot of your things that you desire to do because you have myself. And I want to repay you. And I want the second half of your life to be, you know, purpose outside of Tim. What, what is it that you were dreaming about when you were 18, 19, 20? Let's bring that back to life. You know, and I really want to push that energy out to my dad. Put, I've been pushing that out to my dad. You know, my dad. You know, um, he's actually almost got approved for like this half a million dollar, half a million dollar deal where it's been funded to him for him to be got, got by real estate. And, you know, he tells me all the time, like, man, son, you motivate me to be better. You know, that makes me feel so good. It really does. You know, it makes me feel way better than what any girl could tell me, you know, what any young person could tell me. But when my family actually sees me next to them day in and day out, hustling, showing them income, showing them proof, showing them investments and for them to not be jealous of it or envy it, but to see it and be motivated by it. Um, that's what I want my legacy to be behind. You know, I want my legacy to be all about me motivating the people that's coming up after me or before me um, that, that you know, they are one of them ones, as, as so I like to call it. Mm. That's what I want my legacy to be about. You know, I, I want more people to realize that they are gods. I want more people to recognize that there are uh, so many gods that are walking around this earth. You know, I know that us as black people, for example, we have this whole self-hate thing because we genuinely don't, we aren't educated to know that I'm looking at a God right now and vice versa. Because if we believe that, we wouldn't, we wouldn't um, criticize and judge our individuals, our, our people as the way that we do. You know, I wouldn't hate on you so much if I realized that you were a God, you know, um, but that that that's going to happen in due time. And um, I do believe that there probably be a lot of um, 
flack that I get for that, even speaking like that, even as I'm talking right now, I know some people like this young boy don't know what he's talking about, talking about we are gods. And, you know, that's completely fine. I'm not looking to, I'm not running for president. So I'm not looking to convince everybody what I think is their correct way, because I don't know what's correct. But um, that's what I want my legacy to be about. More young people, you know, being millionaires in their 20s. You know, I've seen this movie called Baby Geniuses. I want to do something like that one day where babies are talking already at the, you know, we develop something so big that they know they, they talking at one, two years old. You know what I'm saying? The future is so bright, man. Like there's no limits on anything. So it's what I'm saying to you right now, who knows, who knows what it'll be in five years when you ask me what I want my legacy to be about again. You know, I'm very, um, I'm a capitalist, a thousand percent. One trillion percent. I see everything as an opportunity to make more money. And who knows, man, in the next five years, maybe I'm worth a hundred billion or two. And I may not feel that way. You know, I may be thinking differently, you know, but who knows? Who knows? It's a, a the future is up to the people who behold it, right? Um, any last thoughts or words of encouragement, of wisdom to the listeners who've made it this far, to the people that's replaying this, rewatching this, and aspire to create, innovate, um, design, build? Any last words of wisdom would you give those people? Um. I would, I would say to you that, you know, even if I've never talked to you before, man, I would say that you're so blessed. You're so lucky to be you. And what I would challenge you to do is, is focus on being just that. Don't try to be Adam. Don't try to be your mom. Don't try to be LeBron James. Don't try to be anybody that you, you may idolize. Take, take from them their characteristics and recognize, man, that you're one of a kind and there's no one like you. And that is your greatest attribute. And that is your greatest advantage. You have a huge advantage over me if you're listening right now. The advantage is that you're you. And there's something about you that I wish I had. And it's vice versa, maybe, I'm not sure. But just know that you have a huge advantage in life. Adam, the fact that your name is Adam, my brother, you have the biggest advantage over everybody because there's not another person in the world that is like Adam Scott. And that's just a fact. And the moment that you actually choose to believe that is when everything changes for you. Last thing I'll say is, man, the moment that you, you, you think that you're not in control of your success is the moment that you remove yourself from it. Anytime that anything ever happens in your life, Never blame anybody else. Always take ownership. If you give, if you blame your situation on Adam, you have to wait for Adam to fix himself for your situation to change. But when you take it upon yourself and you say that, man, this is Tim's fault, you can change you. The quicker you realize that, the quicker you change the situation. And remember, like I said before, the fact that you're even thinking about changing your life the fact that you're even thinking about retiring your mom, Adam, the fact that you're even thinking about being that one for your family lets you know, man, that you got the power to do it. Be excited about that and be on fire about life and um, let nobody take that joy away from you because that's a choice. Mm. Whoo. Hey, you couldn't ask for a better close out um, word of wisdom and insight and knowledge. So again, Tim, I, I, I really want to, Give you your flowers, bro, Um, because, man, you are a blessing sent from heaven Um, because a lot of people that are going to replay this are going to rewatch this. They're going to be like, man, I, I think I, I might be able to go, you know, build a legacy. No, no, no. You you can. You will build a legacy because of your belief in yourself. Um, You know, I, there's this funny thing I was reading. It says, according to the alphabet, the letter L is followed by M. So if you want to get the M, you got to take the L first, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, but we're going to get this L. Hey, we, we hey, we're going to get this M. One way or another, it's inevitable. It's not, it's not, it's not an, a maybe or it's not an if, it's, it's inevitable. So how can people find 10 billions on social media? How can, how can they get a hold of you? How can they find you? How can they follow you on social media? Um, you can follow my Instagram at, uh, at Tim Wright too. Tim Wright, two eyes. That's my Instagram. 
You can follow my Facebook at Timothy Wright II and uh, definitely follow my TikTok. Follow, I'm posting way more content on my TikTok. You can follow me there at Tim Billions, Tim Billions underscore. Um, you can find me there. And, you know, I, I recommend you go, in, you go to follow me, not because I'm looking to gain followers, but because I want to follow you back so we can track each other's journey. You know, if you want to go, if you want to go follow me, I want you to think about everything that I've said and then watch the next three to five years and hold me accountable to everything that I just said and watch how we make, watch how we make an impact in life. You know, that's, that's, that's incredible because, uh, you know, I just left the, uh, this conference where it says impact comes before income. And I know that you're making an incredible impact right now. I know that three to five years from now, the impact that you're going to make is going to be even more impactful um, because of what you said today and the life that you're living. And then also the mentality that you have, because, uh, you know, you don't find many you know people that have the mentality that you do. So, Tim, I want to tell you, I appreciate you, bro. Um, you know, blessed to call you a brother. And I cannot wait to do a part two to this. Because uh, I believe sometime in the near future, you you will have grown extensively enough to even share even more insight and, and, and kind of fill up somebody else's cup so that they can you know be able to steward their cup and then fill up somebody else's cup. So, again, bro, I thank you. I want to give you your flowers. I appreciate your time. I know we kind of went a little bit longer. Hey, but uh, I'm OK with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm OK with that. Um, So so to close out, you know, I, I want to strive and encourage each and every one of you to take heed of what you listen to today to take heed of the words that we spoke and, and take heed of the 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 life that tim spoke inside of you and, and don't let it fall on deaf ears because you do have what it takes you can make it total 180 you can be the first one in your family to create generational wealth you know there's a there's a lot of people that may be down in themselves you know they made it this far into this interview and they like I still don't know, you know, what if, what if I don't become all that God created me to be? And the question I would ask you is this, what if you do? So uh, on that note, I want to close out this interview today. Um, if you are a part of this private Facebook mastermind group and you've gotten tremendous value, hey, do me, do me a big favor. Just comment down below one of your nuggets or biggest takeaways from this particular interview and if you have a friend, a family, a relative that needs to hear this, go ahead and send it to them so they can be encouraged and uplifted in the season of life that they're in. Again, my name is Adam Scott, founder of A Total 180, helping you start and develop your online business in 90 days or less. It was a pleasure, Tim, again, to have you on this one-on-one -on -one interview. And I cannot wait to see what five years from now holds in store for both you, your company, your family, but most importantly, your community. To all that are listening, watching me, be blessed. We will catch you in the next interview. Hey, my friend, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that interview as much as I did hosting it. And I know you can't wait till the next one comes out. But in the meantime, while you're waiting for the next interview to come out, if you're you know listening to this and you're thinking to yourself, man, I really want to implement the stuff that he talked about. And I'm really ready to take my online business to the next level. There's a free training I did where I cover three intangible steps to help you start and develop your online business in 90 days or less. Go to a total180.com forward slash military to get that training there for free. And if you're ready to implement that training, once you've watched it and you've like, Adam, I'm stuck. I really want to go to the next level. I really want to make a total 180, but I'm just not in the right mind frame. And I really need somebody to hold me accountable to my goals, my dreams and my aspirations. And you want to hop on a call with me or my team, go to a total180.com forward slash apply and schedule your clarity conversation phone call. And we'll discuss how we can help you implement the framework and my free training. Again, that's a total180.com forward slash apply so we can help you implement the framework that you'll get in a free training by hopping on a 20, 15 minute conversation with me or my team. Again, I look forward to sharing with you the next interview to come, and I know for a fact you're going to get incredible value from it. I will catch you in the next one.